Hello everyone, I am Prasad from Structural Guide. Today we are going to discuss about water fins. There are different different type of water fins that we use in protecting the structures. But in today's discussions, we are concentrating on application type water fins. How do you do the application? What are the technical stuff that you need to be aware? How do you do the water fin correctly? The basic information that required to be known when you're doing this kind of a application will be discussed today. So I request you all to wait till end of this video. Let's start our discussion. Before you are doing the water hooping, you have to check the expired date. That's the most important thing when you select in the material. And also you have to check the material specification because there are different different type of waterproofing so based on your application you have to select the suitable type of material that is solely based on the specification that specification generally provided by the supplier so you have to refer that document and make sure this application that you have been selected is or that waterproofing that you have been selected is acceptable or match with the particular work that you are going to do so that is the first thing, the expired date and the specification you have to check. So if that is, if those uh, comply with the requirement you are going to do, so then you can proceed with the material. Because now if you do a, a material, if you do use a material expired, then this warranty won't be there. In general, waterproofing, the warranty or the guarantee period for uh, waterproofing will be about 10 years. Therefore, you have to make sure this is not expired. Let's move on to the next point. Now, today we are going, since we are going to discuss about application type waterproofing, the surface preparation is very important. You know, when you do application that's in its apply on the surface, so when you applied it, that surface should be uniform or even. If you applied it an uneven surface, it will be damaged. Because now this is as I mentioned previously, this is a kind of application. This surface should be smooth. Now this won't be like this. Okay. So sometimes you might find something like this in the surface. So what we can do here? Because we have to apply it over this surface right so we are going to apply this over this surface we have something like this what you can do it you can fill this hole that's the basic thing that you have to do so what how do you fill this you can use cement sand mix with the cement sand mix you can fill this because since this this is required certain strength i suggest you can use one is to three cement sand mix for this kind of a application with that you can have a proper surface so first of all you have to do is the surface preparation so when you do the surface preparations things like this has to be rectified so uh, unevenness now in addition to that there may be something like this this part also we have to remove okay you have to remove this part and make it even surface and also it's very important to level it now the now uh, you know uh, when you apply the water hooping in, in a surface it should be almost flat or it should be slow like this there is there is no such a mandatory requirement to have a uh, slope surface but it is there's a must to have a level surface uh, because now when you when you do the uh, water hooping the we are uh, we are making this is a pond right this is your water hooping so this is your concrete surface so you apply the water hooping you make it pond like this so inside this you can <coughs> collect the water but uh, if you have a slope then that would be good because now uh, let's see like this now you have a concrete surface this is now soap surface so you apply the water hooping on top of this right so when you apply it when, when you have a soap surface and the water hooping in there the water collected or, or water come 
to the water hood now say this is the finished surface from that water will come into here penetrate or through the cracks it will come but it will come up to the water hood membrane those water will be uh, travel through this flow then you can collect somewhere here and get it out so you can put a duct or whatever the uh, surface here you you might be you might have a surface like this or you might have a duct somewhere here maybe so it it would be easy to travel now but this is not a mandatory requirement that we have to keep in mind the because the purpose of the boat hooking is mainly there are two reasons first one is to avoid the penetration penetration of the water into the main structure the, through the cracks right through the cracks so if, if you have a main structure like this if this if this is cracked so water will be penetrated into the structure then in the presence of oxygen since moisture is already penetrated the reinforcement will be corroded so we have to protect the structure the one purpose is protecting the structure from the penetration of the water through the cracks the one of the most important thing we are doing the water cooking the second thing is the or oh, the dam so you know uh, concrete is a porous material right we, we you have a water penetrated up to this level say this is the concrete so this is a porous material right? so due to this porosity water will penetrate into this moisture will come into this so with the time when you have a, a penetrated moisture there if you have a, if there are cracks developed in this surface again this will be a issue this is one thing the another thing another important thing is the walls you know we construct walls in structure right maybe big wall or whatever the walls will be constructed right? say this is the concrete so you know especially in the bathrooms when you when you when you shower or when you use the bathroom water will hit by this wall okay water will be penetrated into this wall so if you have a protection there then this penetration will not be happen so that also one kind of a purpose that we use the uh, water hooping membrane so if you have application there water won't penetrate into the wall so wall will won't be damped then your painting and uh, your paints and all that won't be damaged otherwise you might have seen the in walls that has penetration the moisture has penetrated into the wall the damage to the paint especially in this side the paint will be damaged damage you might see in this part of paint paint will be like this air bubbles something like this will be formed here due to this uh, penetration in the moisture into the wall so that also avoided by the water body membrane so those are the main things that we come there are some other some more reasons but today we are not going to discuss all those reasons for doing the waterproofing so we are going to discuss about the application type waterproofing so those are main things that you have to be keep in mind so with that uh, we are uh, concluding the discussion on the leveling and the surface preparation another one important thing we have to discuss here is the ducts and curves now if you take uh, say bathroom like this or area like this this is your bathroom say you your water will be collected here and you might have a duct here from your pipes right so what are the things now we have to consider now let me draw a section here so we take section something like this now say your slab will be like this you will drop the slab to maintain the water foofing then you have a duct here so then say we have a continuation here you have a beam something like this here right say your beam will be like this right there your beam will be like this so you have a duct here here also you have a slab and beam like this right okay now this is your setup you have a level drop 
Now, what are the things that you need to consider in this kind of a situations? There are different different situations in this kind of issues, right? Is in in this kind of a constructions. So, what the purpose of doing the word grouping? If you have a big hole somewhere here like this, there you might have a big hole here also. You might have a big hole like this. So, what you do is you do the water proofing here. So, let me mark the water proofing in different color here. Right. Uh, you have a water proofing. Uh, you are going to apply the water proofing like this. Right. So, what happens if you terminate it? Now, some people what do is they build the brick wall here. Right. Right big pole here and they might do the water cooling like this. Now what will happen to this? This is not a correct construction practice. Why I am telling that? Now as I explained you previously as well, generally water roofing are applied for 10 years. There is a warranty period for the water is 10 years. Beyond that they are, they are not providing the warranties. So that is general practice. There may be some supplies that provide more than that, but generally it's 14 years. For such a situations, if the water roofing won't last after 10 years, the structure we can't again water roof and you know, you know the in the bathrooms you have a tiles and all that are there. So you can't do the water roofing again after reviewing all the tile and all that, that will be a huge cost. So we have to practice the construction correctly. So it should last for the 50 years or any 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 more. So these kind of situations we have a correct construction practices. You have to adapt the correct construction practices. What is the correct construction practice? So let's see what how how do we handle that? Now you know uh, in a in a in a bathroom what we can do here is we can cast a curb there. You can cast curb there. Something like this. So, if you cast curb there, then this is all connected. Now, you have to carve the curb together with the concrete slab. So, you have a concrete curb here that is cast together with the concrete slab. Then, there won't be a joint here. Right? There won't be a joint here. You are casting the curve like this, right? So you have a curb like this. So you don't have a joint there. Now, if you have a brick wall and the concrete, there are two different materials. Definitely, they will be separated. Okay. Since there is a separation, there will be a joint. So this through this joint, water would penetrate into the duct. So. Through this joint, water will come into the duct and duct will be flooded. So, if you have something like this, see, concrete also have a certain resistance to the water seepage or water penetration. So, if there is a no cracks there, this is the best practice. So, one more thing I want to uh, mention here is now, now as we mentioned here, you are going to cast curb there, right? So, then this area will be. Uh, like a pond, so water won't penetrate into the duct, and so also water won't go anywhere. So this will be flooded, and you know this will be flooded. So then anyway, we have flow gullies in the in the bathroom or washroom. So they will be taken through this curve throughout. So the water collected anyway will have to go through this flow gullies and all that. So water won't penetrate to into the structure, it won't penetrate to the brick wall or anything because this is a proper mechanism. We have created the basin something basin like this. Therefore, we have to enclose this area and there won't there shouldn't have a loophole or anywhere that water can see into the duct or into the uh, structure, other part of the structure. That's one of the important thing. Another thing that we have to mention here is now the damping. As we mentioned here, now since you are doing the waterproofing in damping, is I, as I explained previously as well, I suggest to cast the curbs. Now, even if you have, 
if you are having something like this for the bathroom so you might have internal holes in the bathroom it is good practice to cast the concrete curb for constructing the brick wall along that another important thing here is this is the bathroom area so if you have wall like this you can cast a concrete core another thing is now if you are filling the backfill in the concrete then you might need to cast a curb there but beyond that you might need so for example uh, say your bathroom will be like this so you will be filling here up to this level with the after insulation of the pipe and all that so your big hole there will be a big hole in the middle of the partition wall something like that so you can cast there uh, curb like this then big hole you can construct there certain some something like this something like uh, 150 millimeter curb because of that the, the damping won't be there so what absorption into the big hole will be less if you have a concrete the penetration is comparatively you have to keep in mind that because it even can penetrate through the plaster into the brick wall that is there but basically having a curve would be a good practice All right let's move on to the next important thing is the angle fillet what is what do you mean by angle fillet now you know waterproofing is an application type material so we do the applications so this is your concrete surface it's not it's fact okay it's not uh, curved uh, so when you do the applications like this you know there is a corner here so in this corner it's very difficult to apply the waterproofing membrane because it's a sharp edge so there is a difficulty in applying this kind of a situations so what we do uh, do is we can have an angle fillet like this with this you avoid the rough surface or the soft sharp edge so you can do the application like this right it will create a smooth surface and this avoid the 90 degree uh, surface with that you can do the application this length or this fillet would be about 25 millimeter by 25 millimeter you can have a, you can do it with the cement sand mix or as i mentioned previously also you can use one is to three cement sand mix for this kind of a application so you have to keep in mind when you have an edge where wherever you have an edge you have to put the angle pillar this may be a it may be a internal area you might do the external waterproofing also here also you might have to do the angle pillar but when you have a edge like this when you do the application you might need not, not to do it uh, but if you have a edges like this you have to have an angle pillar to avoid this 90 degree angle because there would it will be difficult to apply in, in addition to that the material will be bulge here and then if the waterproofing materials will be collected now it's application so it will flow so when you're doing the application and then if it bulge it would crack therefore you have to avoid these kind of a situations now let's discuss about the application methods now you have a waterproofing area we have an area to be waterproof let's say like this so how do we do the application now as we discussed uh, previously now you have to prepare the surface you have to level the surface you have to remove the uneven the uneven uh, things now like uh, holes and like that you have to repair then uh, you have to do the angle fillet and all that you have to make the curves are there you have, you have to make sure curves are there so with that you can do the application one of the most important thing is the having a dry surface usually according to the general uh, requirement according to the most of most of the uh, applications we need to have yeah, a dry surface so this surface should be dry that you have to keep in mind you have your surface should be dry so that has to be there so you have to make sure the surface is dry then you can do the application you usually we do two coats how do you do two coats firstly you apply in one direction okay firstly you apply one direction that is the first coat then the other coat will be applied in the other direction that is the 
two players that we are applying in our movie. We have to apply two codes in two directions. Once we apply first layer in this direction, we have to apply the other direction in the perpendicular direction. That are the things that you have to be concentrated on doing the application. But during the applications, we have to make sure the membranes are not being damaged. This so is one thing you have to make sure because when you apply, if you hit water moving membrane is hit by a tool, it will be damaged. Then through that joint, water will penetrate into the concrete. The gap between water moving membrane and the concrete surface will be filled with the water. Then no, no use in doing the application. Another most important thing is the now firstly I first I told about this Al not allowing the surface to damage and next thing is you should not when you when you do the application you should not put any materials on this surface it will sometimes this material will be bond with this uh, bond with this the water hoping then there will be a defects therefore we have to keep in mind we have to we have to use the skilled people or qualified people for this purpose having the awareness about this kind of a work therefore when you do the application we have to do it very precisely one more thing i have to i, I need to mention here uh, about the applications, you know, now when you do the application, sometimes uh, they we use the fibers. Now you have a angle fillet like this. In this area, avoid cracking. They use fibers and do the application. You they apply uh, uh, first uh, coating on the fiber, then let it uh, dry, and then then the your first coating for this wall area will be applied on, on, on that. So that also have a certain advantage then you have a fiber there then it will uh, it will not allow to crack it will generate it when there are certain side stresses develop then it will uh, give us a benefit of not getting cracking not getting cracked. So that that is also there then uh, Certain certain situations, uh, we we can use these fibers so to avoid the uh, avoid the cracks. So uh, especially in this uh, angle fillet or soft edges, it better if you can use it because it's a foreign material. Now uh, you have a concrete, but angle fillet it may made with the cement sand. So there will be definitely. Uh, Different, definitely variations in the properties of the material therefore there could be uh, cracks uh, therefore having uh, apply the fiber and place the fiber and then do the waterproofing would be good practice once you do the application we keep the waterproofing to dry let the waterproofing to dry during this period we should not allow to enter anyone to this area so you have to protect that area you might keep the barriers and all that and uh, nothing will be placed on this, that area to make sure. So once it's done, your application is completed. Once it dry, you have to do the pond test, right? Before the protective screen, you have to do the pond test. Now, when it comes to the pond test, I have to mention few things. Now, uh, it is common practice to do the pond test before applying the waterproofing. By doing that, you might be able to identify whether this slab is leak and if slab is leak, where it's going to happen. Because if there are cracks pass through, then the water would be leak. So, if those cracks are important or if these cracks are critical to uh, structural strength or I mean the durability, you have to repair it. Before, without repairing, doing waterproofing, is not that good therefore you might do the repairing first then do the waterproofing so that you have to keep in mind that before doing the, uh, now that's good practice because if you do the pond test you can identify these kind of a cracks or water leaks so if you have a water leaks or cracks so you can repair it then you do the waterproofing right 
once you uh, dry the uh, once you once the concrete surface is dry water moving is dried adequate, adequately then you can do the bond test there are different different specification for the bond test you might keep it for 7 days certain uh, bond test like when you have a very large tank there are different method of testing it like uh, checking the you know, when you have a very large tank especially in underground tanks you have do when you do the internal water hoping with the membrane uh, with the application type you can't i mean see sometimes the water drop so first you fill it and let it the let it for the let it uh, for absorption and all that to happen then after a certain period you can monitor the water level so we are checking whether there's a level drop in there's a drop in the water level those kind of things also that that has to you have to follow the specification we are not going to discuss all those in detail today but there are certain methods there are certain specification for those kind of work especially for the large tank we have to follow those specification or absorption and then monitor water level etc in addition to do the inspection from the outside that is there so you have to keep in mind that for the large tanks but smaller tank small areas like bathroom and all that you won't need to do that in those kind of a situation you find it and you see whether there are a damping or water leak from the soffit so from the soffit of slab if the water leaking you can identify very clearly so if there is no water leak you can approve it to proceed with the screen okay now let's see what kind of a screen should be placed now when you do the water hooping uh, that is smaller membrane or thinner membrane you place on the concrete surface now it has to be protected because if you don't protect it your tool might hit in this membrane and it will damage therefore you have to protect protect it now uh, this protection is not that large but it is a certain protection as i mentioned previously so your water hoofing will be like this you have water hoofing applied so we are using certain protection to avoid this protection generally you can do it 10 to 15 millimeter protective speed you can do so cement sand mix would be 1 is to 3 would be good with that you have a protection so your water hoofing membrane will be protected then you can put the, your pipe and all there then do the necessary insulation of the MEP, those things without damaging this one so you have a protection so you can do it and then your work can be completed that is that is the work process of doing application type work if i can if i summarize what we discussed we have to check the expired date then you have to prepare the surface properly and then you have to make sure your angle fillet are done if required you can use the uh, fiber at those joints to improve that strength then you can do the application in two directions then you can protect the water moving membrane with protective screen uh, and before protect placing protective screen you have to do the on test this those the steps main step that you have to consider when you are doing the application type water proofing so with that i am going to conclude to the discussion i think we have discussed very important facts related to the application type water hooping so let's meet again from a new video with this kind of a lesson thank you very much for watching our videos